we have the model already. Uh, there's several models that were activated in here. And we have three view tabs. One of them is the constructability manager. Before I can say detect clashes, I need to specify the detection settings. And detection settings is the, the dialog that makes it really easy to set up a, a, a clash detection. doesn't require too much training. We simply have left and right. And on the left, you select a collection of element types. On the right, you select a collection of element types. And that's everything you need to do. If you use ARCHICAD, and you can further refine that by adding a collection of layers in addition to the element types that you had, but is not strictly required. As soon as I have my collection of elements, specified again by element type or by layers, I can save it, or save it under a different name, and that way if I want to run a similar detection again, I just open it from my project database and, and, and run the same detection. Um, and the only other settings that I have to worry about is, is here in the bottom. The first one is reset ignored clash list. What that means is um, part of the, 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 the process that we support with Constructability Manager is that we first detect the clashes. Then we go through that list and we classify real problems as constructability issues, like I just said. Some of them may turn out to be not really a problem. If that is the case, you want to ignore them. If you ignore a clash, we'll see that in a minute, it is removed from the list. So in a perfect workflow, you would empty the list of detected clashes, either by classifying them as a constructability issue or by ignoring it. When it's empty, you have gone through all the issues. But um, that also means that if you make a mistake and ignore something by, by accident, you want to get it back, you need to rerun the clash detection. If you rerun the clash detection, by default, it will not pick up that ignored clash because the program knows already that that was not a real clash. However, if you want to get it back, you check this box. We said ignored clash list. So there's no more ignored clashes. Everything will reappear. Yeah. But all of them will Correct. All of them will come back. That's right. You see that when I make a change in this setting, saved analysis settings, it shows my saved setting in red. So that means I need to save it first if I want to use that change setting. Um, recheck existing clashes means I have now a collection of 12 models in the Vic Office project and those 12 models either have, have uh, elements that clash or not and that is a flag. Once that flag is planted it, it will be kept until you say no it is not a clash or it is a constructability issue. If the model is updated so you got a new version of a model, then you activate. You may want to recheck if that clashing situation still occurs. So maybe you move your column based on the outcome of a, of a meeting, constructability analysis meeting, and you have resolved that clash. And then you check this box. We check existing clashes and see if that issue still appears as a clash in the in the list of uh, detected clashes. To run the, uh, the actual clash detection, uh, you either select activate and detect clashes from here, or you, uh, you click on the detect, detect clashes button over here, which will use the currently activated detection settings. So whatever you had selected in here will be used to run the detect clashes process. This is the, uh, the result of that, uh, that clash detection. Um, this is quite a list, 509 items. 
the reason why this is such a long list is that all the columns in this project were modeled um, in such a way that they penetrate the slabs. Uh, so it's a hole punching column type. Now what you typically do is try to figure out what's what's going on. Uh, so click on an, on an element and it, it highlights in the model as you can see or not which is a, a, a problem if you need to analyze the constructability if you cannot see it. So the solution that other applications provide you as well is isolate those two clashing elements. So we did that too. Isolate. If you do that, you lose all the context. So this may be on the first, uh, third floor or on the, the 20th floor. You don't know. So another option would be to make everything else translucent, which is nice, but demands some, uh, or is, is quite demanding on the system regarding the, uh, the performance, because everything that is translucent uh, requires calculations for what's behind it and, and how that should be presented. So with larger models, you will not be able to spin the model easily anymore which is okay if you only need to review one construct or one clash, uh, but if you have 500, uh, you probably want to navigate a little bit and make that more smooth. So to work around that problem, to make it easier to review the, uh, the set of clashes, there's three view, um, view options. One is auto zoom, uh, which will optimize the view in such a way that the uh, two clashing elements are maximized. I can activate that. That may still not allow me to uh, to view the two clashing elements. So the real cool feature we think is the uh, the auto reveal, which temporarily removes the elements in the model that prevent you from seeing the uh, the two clashing elements. So if I want to, to spin it now. It doesn't have the performance um, requirements that you have when, when you have the, uh, the translucency, translucency active, um, but you, you still do get the, the whole context of the model. You, you can see where it is and how it relates to other building elements. And as you can see, spinning the model updates what is hidden. If you use dim model, uh, in addition to these two options, um, everything else will become gray. It really becomes clear where the, the elements are in your question. OK, so this list is now 509 items long. Um, it may be a good idea to filter them by location. So this grid has uh, filtering options built in. And those appear if you hover with your mouse over the, the column headers. So if I click on the funnel icon when I'm in location, uh, I get to choose the locations that exist in the project and the filter will be applied. Once that happens, you see that there is now a filter criteria listed here in the bottom of the screen. I can close that, but I can also edit it. Editing means that the filter editor is, um, is activated. So if I want to refine that further, I just add a new condition. Maybe I want to um, filter based on the date that it was found or uh, based on the number. So anything that uh, begins with uh, 000, zero, zero Three one. Apply. That is a much shorter list. This is much better. <laughs> so I can uh, go back to uh, the previous situation by just clicking here, and that restores the the full list. <laughs>